So we're still doing proofs here. This time we're looking at equivalent statements. When we switch the hypothesis and the conclusion of a statement, so that's P implies Q, we obtain the converse statement, Q implies P. Uh, important word here is converse. So let's take a look at an example first. Classic right angle triangle here. The statement is, if the angle between A and B is 90 degrees, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So that's P implies Q, uh, the angle is 90 degrees, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The converse says if A squared plus B squared equals C squared, then the angle between A and B is 90 degrees. Now, this is an interesting one because it works in both directions. If P implies Q, Q also implies P, but that is not always the case. Here's an example where the converse is not true. If it is raining, then there are clouds in the sky. Raining, P, Q, clouds in the sky. Converse, if there are clouds in the sky, then it must be raining. That's not true. You can have a cloudy day and it's not raining. So not all statements can be flipped and be true. In fact, I'd say most statements can't be flipped and be true. The, the implication only moves one way. Now, of course, if the implication does move both ways, then that might be useful because it might be easier to prove the, the converse than it is to prove the original statement. For example, let X and Y be positive real numbers. Consider the statement, if X is less than Y, then X squared is less than Y squared. Write down, then prove the converse statement. So pretty easy to write down the, the converse statement. If x squared is less than y squared, then x is less than y. Now, you've seen this proof before, but you didn't prove the converse. You proved uh, if x is less than y, then x squared is less than y squared. Proving the converse, I think, is a little bit easier than proving the original statement. All right, let's prove it. x squared is less than y squared. Easy. x squared minus y squared is less than 0. Split it up into x plus y times x minus y, because that's the difference of two squares. x minus y is less than 0. Um, that is dividing both sides by x plus y, uh, because x plus y is, is positive. Um, and then x is less than y. Okay, so we've gone from the converse statement, q, or so we've gone from the original um again we've gone from the original conclusion we've turned the original conclusion into the hypothesis and then we've moved towards the original hypothesis which is now the conclusion so converse very useful this proves far easier than i think proving the other way all right so let m and n be integers consider the statement if m and n are even then m plus n is even um, so I've considered it. Not only did I consider it, but I also proved it here. If you've got two even numbers, then m plus n will be also even. That's a very simple proof. Write down the converse and show that it's not true. Because remember, sometimes converses aren't true. So uh, what's the converse? If m plus n is even, um, then m and n are even. So we turn the implication around. Uh, and now we just need to prove that that's not true. And it's really easy to prove something's not true because you've only got to show me one example where it's not true. So there's our converse statement. If m plus n is even, then both m and n are even. And then we just do a counterexample. So we just, this is called a counterexample. m equals 1, n equals 3, add them together and you get 4, which is an even number. But m and n are not even. Therefore, the converse of m and n are even, then m plus n is even, is not true. It's broken. We've just done one small example to say it doesn't work. Um, okay, so important to note here that we've done a couple of examples, one of which the converse was true, one of which the converse was not true. And even in our beginning, the converse was true for this right angle triangle. The converse was not true for this rainy day title of this video is equivalent statements. That is an equivalent statement. This is not an equivalent statement. So you get a nice little piece of notation here, this one here. 
So if the converse is true, so if P implies Q and Q implies P, then we get this little nice double-ended arrow here to say that it works in both directions. That's as far as we need to go with that. Equivalent statements, uh, sometimes statements are equivalent, sometimes they're not. If they are, awesome.